Okay, now I'm going to tell you the algebra way of doing this. We're going to assume that we don't know 1 plus 2. And so if we don't know what it is, we're going to replace it with an x. 6 divided by 2x. Now another way um, to write multiplication is either to have your numbers next to each other, like we have the 2 right next to the x. Now if it's a number, we would definitely put parentheses because um, if we had already solved that thing in between the parentheses, we, it would be a 2. But if we didn't use parentheses, it would look like the number 23, so we use parentheses with a numeral. When we use a letter for an unknown, we don't have to use the parentheses because we can see clearly that that's 2x. Also, once we get to algebra, <clears throat> the hardest thing for my kids to understand w was getting rid of that x that means multiplication and using either a dot, like this, this dot here, or if you're using the computer, you'd use a star or an asterisk. And those both mean multiplication also, so I made them in blue. <clears throat> but we no longer have um, those signs when we do algebra. You can't use an x as a sign for multiplication in algebra because it gets confusing with your variables x. Okay, now when you divide, you can take that 6 divided by 2x and turn it into what looks like a fraction. Now in fractions, that line in the middle is a dividing line. Including in any fraction, that line can mean division. It's not like sometimes it means division, sometimes it doesn't. Even in a fraction, it can, you know, be division. But we use it, we first use it as division <clears throat> the most when we get to algebra. So we can turn that into something we can use better to do it algebraically. So here we have 6 divided by 2x. Now, next step we can do is we can take that 6 divided by 2x and we can divide it by 2 over 2 or the fraction 2 halves or you know the best easiest way to say it is 2 over 2 um, in algebra that of course 2 over 2 is equivalent to 1 any fraction that has the same top number as the bottom number is equivalent to 1 because 2 divided by 2 is 1. Any number divided by itself is 1. So when you think of that fraction also as a dividing line, that makes more sense. Now the reason we're going to divide it by 1 is to change our equation. It'll still be equivalent. It will still be equal to itself because anything divided by 1 is equal to itself. So here we're going to divide it by 2 over 2. I'm probably not saying all these words perfectly like a math teacher would, but it's still right. Okay, so we take the 6, and we go across to the 2. We divide 6 by 2, and we get 3. And we divide 2x by 2, and we get 1x. Because if you just think I have 2 of something, and I divide it in half, now I have 1 of it. So 2x divided by 2 is 1x. So now we have 3 over 1x. Now that looks weird. So now we go down here. The next thing we can do, um, that we have reduced it to 3 over 1x. Now, the simplest way is if we know x equals 3, because if we go back up to our original problem, we've made x out of 1 plus 2. So we know in this problem that x equals 3, because 1 plus 2 equals 3. So now we go down to when we've reduced this as much as we can to make it simpler, or simplified it. Um, we know x equals 3, so if we plug 3 into that problem, 1 times 3 is 3. And I use the dot for multiplication. Um, 1 times 3 is 3, which equals 3 thirds which equals 1, and also 3 divided by 3 equals 1, but 3 thirds we also know is equivalent to 1. So now we have solved the whole problem because we reduced our problem down to this, 3 over 1x, and then we plugged in the x that we already know to be true for this problem, 
and we come out with 1. So that is further proof that this problem up here is equal to 1. You can't just take one rule and be absolute. Math is absolute. It only has one answer. But if we take one rule without thinking of all the rules and say PEDMAS is the only answer, but we kind of mess some things up in the middle there, we need to be able to prove it other ways. Mathematicians prove things many different ways before they say this is the right answer. They can never get another answer and have it be right. You can't get three or four different answers and say, oh, well, I did it this way. I have a different answer. No, the, only one answer is correct. And I think that is the lesson to this silly thing going on the Internet is people think they can do it many different ways and come up with, the, with an answer that's right for them. But in math, there is not an answer that's right for you. There is one correct answer. Math is absolute. If you're doing math for NASA and people come up with different answers, you're going to have your satellite that you wanted to send to a certain place in space, and it's going to be way off, even if you make a minute mistake. If your mathematical um, operations are not correct, you can be way off. You can lose expensive equipment, and it's just wrong. So in math, there are absolutes, and we cannot get past that.